Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneur India's uh, Resilience Series. And today we are going to talk about a very interesting and timely topic, and that is about gaming startups in India. I'm Saurav Kumar, uh, editor of Special Projects uh, Entrepreneur India, uh, the moderator for the session. Uh, before we start, I'll quickly uh, uh, lay down the ground rules uh, ground rules for our attendees. Uh, the discussion will go on for 45 minutes or so, and this will be followed by a Q&A session for the next 15 minutes. If you have any questions uh, during the course of the discussion, you can post them through the uh, Q&A option. If you are watching us live on Facebook, you can post your questions in the comment section. Uh, mention in your question if it is directed towards uh, any <coughs> specific panelist, and we'll take up the questions post our discussion. Uh, let me now introduce our panelists for the day. Uh, we have with us uh, today Mr. Uh, Saurav Jha, uh, founder Playing Eleven, Mr. Suhail Chandro. co-founder analytics sports technology uh, mr vaivav dompunwar ceo and founder better capital and mr pavan nanda ceo and co-founder winzo games so uh, uh, welcome everyone uh, uh, the first very important question right now which i want to ask from all of you is that did you play pubg are you disheartened are you in a morning state no no one okay so you know i i am just looking for people who actually play uh, pubg and uh, no I, guys i think uh, I, I, hey, i sorry so so definitely i guys <laughs> i had a daily regime for last 6 months used to play pubg with my friends at 11 pm sharp okay. and uh, it was a total shocker for me i'm blown apart <laughs> i'm like i'm moaning right now <laughs> that's all i can say so, i got to say really badly hit that way I played it once, and I invested a lot. Like I built my skills, right? Eventually, I started playing better, and then they just why they, they they removed so, the game itself. It's a hard game to master, right? It's not so, like you will so, start so, playing well overnight. So you are one of the yeah. royal pass holders. A lot of investment holders. gone down the drain. So you are one of the royal pass holders, is it? Yes, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. So I, I, royal pass is more for more to buy in-app purchases and fancy costumes. I was I was more into like cutting down the skills, right? To so. I was like uh, that was fairly serious. We used to have a league of our own, you know. Uh, like there are certain clans that we as college guys have joined. I mean, we in our college group have joined. Not that I'm in college anymore, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you're saying something. I said I played it once as I was doing research for uh, for an esports event that I was going to host. So I I attempted it once, played it for a day and a half. It's still on my tab, and uh, that's the end of my PUBG experience. So I'm actually glad I didn't invest so much time because I'm pretty sure I'd be pretty disheartened if I did. Yeah. I'm sure it is for a lot of people. You know, since the morning, I've seen a lot of memes and everything about PUBG uh, players being disheartened. So you know, it's very interesting time for Indian gaming industry. You know, in the last month, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi himself urged Indian game makers to combine technology and local flavor to create Indian games. And now, you know, yesterday around 35 Chinese games, including PUBG, were banned. So you know. uh it, it, and it took no time that i started seeing that you know there are all some types of pubg and everything av av available so you know my question uh, first question is that what is uh, what will it take for indian game makers to you know get that kind of a, a, a an experience that pubg gave that got people hooked on to it so and where are we lacking or is it or is it just in the making and will be there sometime so wherever you can if i can start with you Yeah. Um no look I think um it's it's extremely hard um to build a game number one and it's even harder to build a game that actually becomes as successful as PUBG did right oh. um I think uh, some of the gaming <coughs> founders basically said that 95% of India uh, gamers essentially played PUBG right um so I think it's it's uh, the short answer it's really hard and the long answer is the fact that you know if you just look at the history of some of the best games uh, ever they have been built by uh, studios that um, built and failed and built and failed and then succeeded after a very long time right so it is just not about technology unfortunately i think we have uh, in fact within our portfolio as some of the best gaming founders in the country however i think it just a it's a lot of variables coming together and even the best teams have to struggle a lot before getting to something like a pubg right so oh. i think um look uh, should we start to do our own absolutely we should but i think it's going to take a long time for us to kind of create something that is um, that, that is as good as pubg oh. 
okay okay so when i'll come to you you know you uh, 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 the the new the, the new uh, super click that you uh, you know about to launch so you talk you said that you know it will have a lot of deep tech involved in it so do you think you will be able to uh, give that kind of an engagement to fans that you know they'll get on get hooked on to that kind of uh, you know uh, and obviously yours is a simulation game it's not a fantasy yeah. game so it's, what do you think that will be able to create that kind of an engagement for players so i think uh, the key word there that you used was engagement right and i think fan engagement and and gaming engagement and immersiveness is a big one and i actually read a report recently that said 79% of people who are watching tv these days between the ages of 16 and 45 are using another device while they're watching television right and that could be whether you're playing the whether you're watching the ipl or watching anything else as well so for us we come in with a cricket simulation game which is based on strategy but it's also based on utilizing historical data from actual matches where for us we're sitting at our tv screens yelling at the screen saying i could have done that better than ms dhoni i could have captain better than virat kohli and we're sort of trying to give you that experience in the palm of your hands to make those decisions and then see the outcome of your choices actually have an implication on the match outcome so uh, you know I, i think for us the other aspect is that we can go all year round right i think we've seen now with covid hitting that there is uh, you know there are certain uncertainties that we can't quite manage within ourselves and we don't know whether they're going to hit us or not so we sort of developed it from the uh, aspect of using you know ai and machine learning to make sure that the simulation can continue there's no match your your basing it on while it's on so you know this you can play all year round so I, i do think fan engagement is a big one and how you loop the fans in is is the most important fact but you look i agree with vibhav it's not the easiest to do even when you got got everything going right you need that little something to to click for the for the fans to loop on to a game and uh, yeah hopefully we all have that somewhere mm-hmm. okay so when what would be what would it take to get that something to you know for us to get a uh, create a game which will uh, engage us so in men uh, uh, you know uh, so so deeply that we we are we come please about that game is thing if see if if there would have been a simple answer i would have created a couple of them myself right so <laughs> the clearly there the is <laughs> so there is no clear answer to it in fact to your answer and i think we have also put it out really well i think uh, so pubg had something in it right so there are multiple first person shooting games as well just to put some context on the lay of the land right there is fortnite there is uh, call of duty there is free fire but still uh, uh, the way uh, pubg pubg sort of you know uh, got to the pulse of the nation you know with the ease of uh, the ease of navigation with their graphics the gra- graphics being just enough palatable for the indian mobile devices i think all of that uh, uh, all of that required uh, some two years of hard work of about 1000 developers if i am not wrong so uh, uh, pubg was actually built initially by blue hole a company you know which uh, which had about 1000 developers working for two years to get to where where they could uh, right uh, so it's definitely not a not an easy thing to do and with the risk that at the end of the day uh, when you launch that game the game can totally bo- bomb right so it's a very right. risky and a very expensive investment as well mm-hmm. uh, so it's not just about scale i'm sure from a skill standpoint from an I- idea standpoint from a talent standpoint india is not that behind i mean i'm sure there'll be great great talent out there and if we really you know uh, give infinite time infinite shots infinite pool of capital we'll be able to deliver something like that but the question is is there infinite you know resources out there in the country like ours definitely not so yeah it's it's i think it's a, it's a lot of factors and not just uh, whether we can do it in india or not we can definitely do it uh, but uh, we need to have uh, we need to have certain uh, uh, you know resources in place okay uh, sort of i'll come to you next is that uh, let me first uh, talk about fantasy gaming with you so you know when when live sports stop so fantasy gaming went down to zero so you know is there a lesson to be learned here or let's just forget it was it was one off event and it won't happen again so let's move on it's okay uh, while fantasy gaming uh, uh, like uh, live gaming was zero we uh, uh, like uh, other applications they provided quiz and many more games like ludo uh, at that time was at high highest and many more games and uh, we uh, quite move on because after one month uh, there are some t10 games 
like uh, in the start of april, april uh, there is a t10 game in tapai and many more part of the uh, world where corona uh, hasn't hit so uh, like for tw- uh, 12 to 15 days it was zero but after 15 days we again uh, came back with a t10 and many more games like user, uh, other applications they started with the flashback games uh, of ipl and uh, and many more other and we uh, and, and on playing 11 we started quiz as well so uh, people need something to engage Uh, sort of, you got muted. You have to unmute. Yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead. So uh, that was the dark. Uh, that twelve to fifteen days was the darkest uh, part of our uh, for the fantasy gaming. Uh, so uh, removing that ten to twelve days, uh, um, we sort of evolved. Uh, you can say because at that time there was nothing. So uh, all of them uh, are playing uh, uh, fantasy gaming from the from the home. They have nothing to do. So uh, that was blessing in guys for us, and we part of evolve from that. So we have just forget about that, uh, and we have move uh, move forward for uh, for, uh, for the other. Okay. Okay. So Swain, I'll come to you. So what was your learning for uh, Super Cricket came from? During this period, or what? What is? What was this in the plans, and it just materialized right now? How is it? No, I, I, I've got to say, we sort of looked at adversity and thought, okay, how can we turn adversity into opportunity? And that's where uh, Super Cricket evolved from. So it's a complete COVID product. Uh, it emerged and evolved uh, out of COVID times. And uh, you know, I think we saw it as therefore a need to continue forward, right? I mean, there'll always be. Some sport or the other, but uh, we do live in India, and in India, cricket is king. I think uh, you know it's it's imperative that uh, we we sort of understand that as well from a sporting perspective. And even when there's no IPL on, there's nine months of the year still to go. If there's a not another series on, you still have that fever for it, right? You still want to see uh, how uh, you can have uh, certain outcomes come out of a match, or what you know a certain captain could have done last night to change the outcome of a match. And so we sort of give you that perspective with real data, and yeah. So I think you know we, we're bracing for we're not fingers crossed not bracing for another COVID, but uh, we're bracing for any uncertainties that could come away. But also just trying to make sure that fans have something different to try and uh, you know have a thought process on a match because everyone in India thinks and and knows that they're they're an armchair expert. So we're sort of catering to that mentality as well. Right. And sort of I think uh, one interesting thing happened for us uh, a portfolio company called Fanspool. Right. Uh, think of fans ball as you know, um, kind of fantasy contests for uh, for everyone, right? right? It's a platform, so it's not like playing against the house. You can literally have uh, friends, family, and your fans uh, that are engaging around a contest that you can create, um, public, private, your own rules, sort of a thing, right? And what happened is we quickly were able to kind of enable uh, PUBG fantasy as well, and that worked just phenomenally well, actually, right? Um, a little too well because I think there are some constraints around that. But um, what we think is that um, uh, fantasy is extreme engagement around sports as well as esports. Um, so, like I think Sohel also mentioned, you know, you can um, you can text only so much, right? And obviously, the excitement uh, does not come out in text; it, it comes out in action. And I think fantasy is about action, and that's where I think engagement is going to continuously happen, right? Um, and at Fansport, what we're saying is, you know. Whether it's esports or sports across every sport, so throughout the year, uh, there will be something that sports fans will be able to engage on. Um, so I think um, over a period of time, I think sports and esports uh, will sort of uh, cover any gap whatsoever, and also scenarios like we faced in March and April. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the statistics that we see in terms of growth projection. I'm sure that there will be more in, in off, uh, offering uh, from the uh, games industry. But uh, one question I would want to ask from Suhail and Pawan also, and I would do of everyone. So I just saw that you know, 85% of you know the gamers in India actually engage in some kind of cricketing, uh, you know, gaming of, of online. So whereas the other gaming sports like the national, you know, we have hockey, we have uh, you know. Football has such a craze in this country, and kabaddi. Uh, so, well, of course, you had kabaddi at that stage. So, Pawan, I'll first come to you and ask you that you know, uh, what 
with would we see more uh, you know uh, the sports uh, other sports coming into the gaming arena and people engaging with it for me i would really love to uh, see more sports coming into uh, the gaming arena <coughs> sure see I'll, i think uh, let me let me let me share my theory here right and so it's an observation some people agree with it some people definitely you know don't agree with me but the observation is that when you and i were kids right we used to in the evening we used to go down we used to play cricket maybe you know 90% of the people used to play cricket some people used to play football basketball tennis all that and uh, when you used to come come back to our homes uh, there used to be cricket match on the tv because our fathers or forefathers have always played that right so i think the kind of sports that you offer uh, or rather follow is more to do with what you like to play and then what you like to watch during our generation people who have like literally born in 80s 90s right uh, i would say there most of the people have have a very strong fondness of cricket we got imbibed in ourselves you know at a very early age right that's how we grew up with we literally used to slept alongside a bat cricket bat right in a ball but if you look out at today's generation you know folks who are currently in their tweens you know 13 14 15 year old these guys are not going out and you know and playing in the parks right in the evening these guys are literally on their smartphone and they're playing video games they're playing computer games they're playing playstations they're watching a lot of their you know that probably not even as big a fan fan follower of uh, virat kohli as they would probably be of their popular their popular game streamer out there right there are a couple of popular such uh, video game streamers in india already right and we've seen those kind of statistics so my sense is that you, you know 5 years 10 years down the line there's going to be a very strong esports culture because the seeds have been imbibed in such a manner it's not going to be as much outdoor centric as it used to be when we used to be kids i think the next generation next 10 15 odd years is going to completely transform the way sports is looked at and that's why i completely agree with what webhub has shared right where fantasy for esports is going to be huge i mean there's a company called sleeper you know which is being backed by anderson horowitz in uh, us uh, which only does fantasy for esports right because esports is large there so fantasy for esports has already started making sense and they raised tons of capital that way in india now esports is picking up but i'm very sure alongside the moment esports is getting going to be sizable there's going to be a massive leg to fantasy as well there's no doubt that just the way there is ipl as which is a property for cricket there'll be a massive property similar way for some esports game like pubg or late pubg rather <laughs> or or so to say right yeah that is how i think about it so you know uh, just 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 to mention there was there was something called so one day one of my kids in my home he was getting ready on a sunday going to where where are you going he said pubg sammelan i i do not know what it was but there was something called a pubg sammelan so so anyway that apart so well i'll come to you cricket yeah. but you've been associated with other sports as well so you know what do you think how will we see them also coming or uh, uh, you know into the main gaming in uh, you know i i half agree with pavan but i think i've got a slightly sort of different version as well uh, in terms of seeing the sport grow right i mean i've been involved now with the the football league the hockey league the badminton league kabaddi league uh, and obviously the ipl as well now for three seasons but having seen the growth of each of these sports individually as well uh, you see a very strong trend where obviously the ipl is concerned we know that's an uphill trend it's it's not going to drop at any point uh, the other one that surprised us all and you know i've been associated with it since the start is the kabaddi league we saw 435 million viewers in the first season that's you know continued on into season number 6 now and 7 and and also i think the the big side of that and since we started kabaddi adda i've seen obviously tremendous tremendous fan engagement within that audience right and we're talking about tier 2 tier 3 cities uh, an audience that hasn't uh, sort of been captive and and while pavan said you know we we grew up in our in our homes playing cricket in our backyard we got to remember our grandparents played kabaddi right uh, they they grew up playing kabaddi the grandkids now are seeing kabaddi as a cool sport again so there's sort of this this merger of the two and then in between the parents therefore are the kebab mein haddis where they have to now come to the the kabaddi platform as well so and and where i mean where about to launch some kabaddi gaming too but i think cricket will always be number one right i think uh, there's no doubt about that cricket will always be number one cricket will uh, will always sort of drive the others uh, i think the the point the pavan made about esports is a very good one in the next 5 uh, to 10 years it has to head in that direction i think it's it's the only logical uh, way forward we're seeing the drive 
across the, 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 the globe and uh, India is usually uh, not so far away on the, the tech trends. But I still think cricket and sport will have a separate place to esports. I think sport will always have a very special place. I think we can't discount how much sport means to people, how much uh, the heart strings are tugged on and how much emotion goes into sport. And when you tap into that emotion when it comes to a game, that's when you draw in a good audience, right? And I think with cricket, you're able to tap in that audience and Kabaddi, you're able to tap in that pride as well. And who knows, football might be the next or, or uh, any other sport. But I think cricket will always be the standalone strong one. And then Kabaddi, I think, will be the, the next one to catch up uh, alongside, obviously, esports being the big one. Mm -hmm. Saro, I'll come to you. So, you know, Sohan talked about the tapping that emotion of cricket in India. Obviously, it's more than a sport. And, you know, the cricketing icons are more than, uh, you know, some, you know, the word as God even so. And so it was that the emotion that you also wanted to tap when you started playing 11? And if, if given a chance, would you pivot to some other game? And if you would, what would that game be? Yeah, that only uh, uh, cricket. I, actually, I am also a cricket player. I haven't played uh, a, a state level or something, but I am a cricket player. So that only uh, uh, means that uh, that only strike in my mind, and I started playing eleven. Mm, because as a mm, as a fan or as a mm, or as a player, and uh, like who do who uh, who want to play cricket, uh, not playing eleven, he can play cricket uh, as a player as well. Like we have eleven player in a team, and as a twelfth player, I can play in a team. I can I can pick who's the man of the match, who will be the man of the match, who will score the most run. So, uh, uh, as a player, uh, player are the are also in the playing eleven. But as a user, I'm also engaging uh, in our uh, in in the playing eleven platform. And we have uh, also headed to other sports like football uh, is uh, is the second most loved game in India. Like uh, like Sohel said, Kabaddi Kabaddi is what uh, uh, after cricket, football is the another loved game in India. Football, uh, basketball as well. Uh, so, uh, but the the first game and uh, first game will be the cricket only. Uh, I think I think the difference here is Suhail is talking about from a viewership from yeah, the yeah. from the yeah. number of people standpoint, and Saurav is talking from a monetization More standpoint. Well, point. actually, point. I'm also yeah. talking about from from Dream Eleven, for instance. Last year, I know that Kabaddi contributed about 11 percent of their their revenue. So, uh, I did a lot of work with them on the on that side of it. So, I guess it's. It's a bit of, I'm seeing the reflection today of the viewership turn to monetization. And I think that's going to improve, obviously, as time goes on. But uh, I think the other sports are still playing catch up, yeah. And I think, you know, we are at the cusp of a new generation, like Pavan mentioned, of the tweens and the teenagers who actually spend way more time um, on, uh, on uh, esports uh, than they would on live sports, right? Uh, for good or for bad, that is the real trend. And I think if you look at uh, about two, three hundred million of these teenagers in a country like ours, that's like the entire population of the United States, by the way, right? So, um, so I think that's just going to be a very, very important segment, right? Um, just, just around. Uh, so we, I don't think going forward, because I think we, I mean, in my business of venture, I mean, it's all about looking, looking into the future, like we discussed in the past. Um, and I think uh, when I look at that, I think over the next decade, like Pavan mentioned, um, I think uh, esports is just going to be very, very large, right? There will be a Virat Kohli or PUBG or whatever the game is, right? Uh, Call of Duty, whatever it may be. And there will be an entire generation in India that you and I may not be able to relate to, but they are in a world that is as sticky as cricket. And while no other game in India was able to displace cricket, I think esports might, right? And, and, and to a large extent, uh, you know, uh, just taking the Vanspool example again, Vanspool is a sleeper of India. Um, uh, like Pavan mentioned, except that it's going to kind of um, cover both sports and esports, right? Because it's not that live sports is going to die anytime soon. It's just that esports is going to be really, really large in the next decade. Esports can be played anytime, any like, but live game yeah, user have to invest time instead of money. They have to invest time as well. So that's why esports in upcoming five to ten year it will be competing with cricket as well in India. And there is also um, uh, this this whole trend of uh, micro attention spans, right? Um, I, I think, uh, tell me the last time you watched a three hour Hindi movie, right? Uh, 
just not happening right um i think uh, you could binge watch the 40 minute netflix serials right but you just can't get yourself to play a movie which is which is two and a half hour long um so i think there is that increasing trend where you know what a pubg match is i think there are different durations right but that is the excitement right and everybody's got an <clears throat> faster cycle which i think they can get in these sports which they weren't but i think live sports will maintain that live um the the curiosity of live right that's not going to go away so oh. obviously no i saw some of the alternatives to pubg as you were mentioning are games which actually give you shorter duration faster game faster Uh, experience so that kind of drives the engagement so i i completely agree there so you know we were talking about whether you're talking about we will see uh, you know virat kohli's of uh, e gaming or maybe so i was looking at some some of the names that are there you know blizzard uh, ramanathan and uh, shreyan or i forgot the names of the names but all are names you know there is no women name in the, in, in in that in that list that i saw so uh, uh why would suhail pawan anyone what what is it i mean i know that you know out of the total internet users of the country 560 million only 33% are women so is that the cause or is it it's because predominantly we are giving cricket as a uh, you know uh, as a as a playing option to for to our uh, uh, you know people or is it something else that we are not seeing uh, we, or 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 my statistics are wrong that there are women participation but maybe not at the top on the on the lighter note i think uh, most most women are seeing their boyfriends husbands and everyone so drowned in the tv that they're saying you know if if this continues i you know i'm not going to get any time with them so maybe that's why they've drawn away from it and pulling out as much as they can but look i, I don't know i think maybe maybe the trends will change right i mean i think we saw with women's sport as well it took time to engage uh, we're seeing it now big in australia in the united states and other countries before it got big in india as well even with women's cricket being sort of premier there and we're seeing women's football in america and things like that i know outside of outside of india and in europe there are a lot of uh, women gamers as well but i think it needs to continue that culture of you know i remember in school we would go to these dungeon little you know gaming arcades and play and and it was me and a, a bunch of my my guy friends right and I, i think that sort of was how we grew up and i think that sort of that culture and that ethos has continued into into this stage but i think more the more women uh, get invested into a sport and be Uh, e-sports as well and, and fantasy sport i think for them that investment there will also translate into uh, playing more games and uh, i think once you you sort of bite the bullet you're sunk because it's so good so i think it's that they're taking that first step uh, and then uh, maybe they they don't want to, to to take that first step at this point but i think it's a matter of time mm-hmm. so when your observation what have you seen on your platform in, uh, in terms of women participation in the game when you muted sorry <clears throat> so we have about 22% uh, female participants 78% male which is uh, i would say almost similar to slightly better than the overall uh, internet population uh, you know the representation on the internet population uh, we are trying to we are trying to uh, push forth we are trying to put more relevant conta- content uh relevant games you know we are trying to have this uh, dedicated referral program those kind of stuff we are doing uh, to promote uh, own participation i think with time this is going to pick up the thing is that uh, you know <clears throat> yeah i'm sure when it comes to playing games there are a lot of uh, you know women who are playing games that percentage would anyway be you know fairly i think a 40 60 kind of a, a, a kind of a ratio as far as competitive uh, gaming is concerned concerned right because ours is like a competitive gaming platform right mobile esports platform you can say where there are about 65 70 odd games people compete against each other i think there the percentage is still lesser so yeah but i of course the future is bright and we all are running for it i mean uh, i think uh, in, involvement or i would say uh, uh, rather uh, uh, inclusion of uh, the entire 50% of the society or you know gender in, uh, inclusion is something which is going to be a very massive boom right for everyone like for every sector so to speak so it makes all the more sense to do relevant things to get get a very very balanced gender ratio i know what add a small point about um, my observation um i think uh, boys and men in general have uh, have uh, have sports which occupies a big part and not much else right whereas women uh, 
I think will play, will continue to play and that will grow. But I think they also have attention um, that is uh, on other segments as well, right? So I think like esports, if we say, hey, Instagram, beauty and fashion is also, or YouTube, beauty and fashion is a part of it. I mean, let's say somebody who's streaming about beauty and fashion on YouTube, I would say that's, uh, that's similar um, in, in so many ways to what, uh, what somebody, what a, what a male may be streaming um, a game on YouTube, right? So I think it's a matter of interest as well. So I think there is enough participation in terms of, let's say, e-streaming and about a hobby. Um, it's just that I think men have lesser Whereas I think women generally, if you look at beauty, fashion, cooking, and sports, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's segregated between those buckets. Um, and I can see that play out in my household within my kids as well, right? Um, it's not that uh, the women like uh, sports less, it's just that they do other stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, sort of how has been the numbers for you on your platform in terms of gender? 13% we have female. And another 87 are of male. But uh, the highest winner is a female only oh, uh, in, our, in our platform. But I, I have observed that uh, the cricket interested in the female are less as compared to volleyball, or volleyball badminton in the fantasy sports. Mm-hmm. Like in the volleyball, uh, the percentage goes up to 33% for the female okay. in playing fantasy okay. as compared to cricket. So, but uh, it will change uh, in upco- upcoming years, like one to two years. Uh, like we are promoting uh, through IPL. Uh, uh, maybe after two years, we will be seeing the women IPL as well. So maybe then the ratio will increase. Okay, right. Well, that's a food for thought for women IPL. Maybe you know we should we should, yeah. uh, we should really think about you know. Yeah, and I think it's we're not far away. I think it's it's also a cultural thing, uh, sort of. You know, it has to change culturally. I think uh, I lived in Australia for four and a half, five years, and I saw women's sport there. I coached uh, women's cricket at the highest level there, and I, you know, I I understand how different the mindset is there versus it, it, you know the way it is here. Here, when a woman plays sport, it is it's a huge deal, right? There, it's just part and parcel of of their day. So I think that cultural shift, when it does happen, it'll reflect in all aspects, uh, even with gaming as well. Uh, I think the other way to to sort of try and leverage it, and that's what we're trying to do at, at Super Creek and uh, at Kabaddi Adda as well a little bit, is is to try and get a group involved, right? When you when you play for for pride with your friends, with with groups of friends, there's, there's a bit more at stake as well. And I think when you sort of get that that sort of group mentality coming into watching a sport, it then automatically reflects into the way you're invested into gaming about that sport, right? So I think it's you've got to try and uh, tap into not just those two those two guys, the two brothers or the father and son in that, in that duo, but get his girlfriend involved, get, you know, get uh, the wife and, and the daughter involved somehow. And I think that's how you maybe have to try and monetize it by getting these groups together and creating rooms. And I know a lot of different platforms are doing it and maybe that's, uh, that's an answer, but it's, yeah, we're, we're still going. I think we're still a, a long way from it because of uh, just the cultural uh, differences as well. Okay. So, you know, uh, but before I move to the next question, I'll again request our attendees to keep uh, your questions coming. We'll take it up in the next uh, three, four minutes. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'll move on to something else which I wanted to know. And Pavan, I'll come to you with this question. Is that, you know, the government obviously is encouraging uh, uh, gaming players to, you know, come up and build game space in India for the world. and it's, But, uh, you know, I was just looking at the laws that govern gaming in India. So, uh, there is still a gray area, you know, where something called a uh, skill-based game is allowed as a, a, you know, fantasy game or something, but a chance-based game, you cannot involve money in those. So that area is there. So do you think there is any any clarification that would be required or amendment that would be required really to make uh, uh, gaming a more, uh, you know, for people to take up gaming in terms of startup, uh, startups to make newer games? Okay. See, firstly, I think uh, for people who have uh, decided to build co- their companies around this, they have had enough, uh, you know, research done, and the laws are fairly clear. I can, I mean, for the interest of our audience as well, and for the pan- panel, I, I'll be happy to sort of, you know, cite it down here. Right. So, as far as real money, as far as games where there are no real money is involved, right? No real money gaming is involved. Any and every kind of game is allowed. I mean, you know. You, you see Ludo, 
you see Team Bhakti, you see all these games. They can be, you know, they can be played even though there is luck involved, there is chance involved. As long as there is no real money involved in it, they are there is absolutely no problem. When it comes to you know real money gaming, where people will be putting in some money, wagering in some money, and at the end of the day they can win some money back. There, as per the Supreme Court of the country, only wagering on game of skills is allowed. And how the Supreme Court of India uh, cites game of skill is basis a game that should involve some kind of a hand-eye coordination, finger dexterity, knowledge, EQ, IQ, motor skills. Basically, some degree of reasonable degree of skills, and should not be out and out and predominantly skills. It's not like every game has a certain percentage of skill and a certain percentage of chance, right? But the predominant effect of a particular game should be skill and not chance. Those kind of games are allowed. So that is the blanket statement by the Supreme Court of India when it comes to real money gaming. And then it leaves up to each and every state to whether allow or disallow any particular kind of game. But by and large, as you know, out of 20, uh, 28, 29 states, I think uh, 25 states allow real money gaming. Uh, and uh, the market is thriving, uh, you know, uh, very, very aggressively. Uh, so, yeah, that's what it is. I think uh, so folks who want to enter into real money gaming, they should definitely make sure that the predominant effect should be skill and not chance. Uh, and uh, yeah, and for non real money gaming side, you can pretty can much you, build anything. You know, can you, can you cite one example where you say that, you know, the predominant uh, effect, like the skill, skill has to be the predominant thing and chance has to be. Sure. That's, uh, sure. Sure. For example, I think, uh, you know, a, a simple example can be something like a uh, Teen Patti versus a Rami. So, uh, Team Patti is considered to be a pure game of chance because beyond the kind of cards that are distributed to you, you cannot do much. Correct. Right? Uh, you know, if I have three aces, I will win each and every time. No matter how much money somebody else has, nobody, you know, no matter what happens in this world. However, on the other side, a game like Rami, which <clears throat> for the uninitiated, it's basically uh, you need to pick certain cards from a, from a deck and you, you can discard some cards, you need to make some combinations and it's a lot of probability also that gets involved. That is considered to be a game of uh, game of uh, skill and not a game of chance. A simple test would be as a person continues to play a particular game, the odds of that person to win should improve. The performance should improve with time. I think that is one simple thing. For example, if you sit on a roulette table, you know, your win or loss uh, or your win is to loss ratio will be a flat line with time. But if you play any uh, game of skill, your win is to loss uh, ratio. If you're playing with the same folks, let's say, eventually will be a linear growing curve. That is how also, you know, it's proved in court of law. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That was really, uh, that was really uh, good to understand for me as well. So, you know, we'll start picking up some questions that, uh, that we've got from... Uh, uh, our uh, viewers. So, uh, uh, one of the questions that we have got on Facebook uh, from uh, uh, is that you know what are the best monetization strategies for gaming startups? So, uh, uh, you know, wherever I'll come to you, you know, also because when you invest, I'm sure that you know the one of the main main concerns would be that monetization has to happen, right? So, uh, what 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 are the strategies that you think are the best for gaming startups? Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, there are two segments, right? One is the game itself, and then there are other um, sort of companies that are built around the game, right? Um, and I think uh, within the game itself, I think the monetization strategies have been fairly uh, well understood over the years across generation of games. Um, and, and Fortnite's of the world have kind of taken it to the next level as well. But it is really about unlocking levels, unlocking um, you know, uh, skills or material and things like that, right? So for a very engaging game, whether it's Fortnite, PUBG, Call of Duty, etc., cetera, there is, a, there is a very systematic approach to uh, that which has been established, right? There's a lot of new innovation happening as well in, in that, but I think that is well understood. Um, I think the, the more interesting stuff is happening in um, in the companies that are built around these games, whether they are streaming companies, 
um, or they are engagement folks like fans poll or somebody like that who's doing fantasy and things like that, right? So there, uh, a set of new models are coming up, right? Whether uh, I'm monetizing my stream with ads or, uh, you know, there is this whole idea of um, a, a streamer saying, hey, you, you can play with me, right? For a, for a different experience. So there is monetization around that that is happening where either the streamer is going direct or there are platforms or they're going through messaging and things like that. Game coaching itself is globally now a multi-billion dollar industry, which means there are people who actually get pay hourly coachings to get better at a certain game, right? So it is just incredible. So I think the game stuff is, you know, broadly understood as there's obviously innovation, but around the, the companies that are being built around these games, there's just incredible stuff that's happening uh, in, in terms of monetization, right? Um, so so lots, lots of different players experimenting with lots of different things. Eventually, I think my, my belief is that we will, see, um, we will see a very, very large ecosystem forming around games just because like Pavan mentioned, it's very hard to build these games, right? Um, so it's not that we will have hundreds and thousands of really good games with large population, right? So we'll have only a few. So the ecosystem around these will be where a lot of innovation around monetization will happen. Mm -hmm. That's correct, that's correct. Sort of, sort of what, what, what would you say to the, what were the, you know, the monetization strategies that you think uh, are, are the best for gaming startups? Are you sure, sir? Sort of? You're on mute, sir. Yeah. Sort of, can you can you hear us? I think we've got the closing. So, uh, Pawan, if I can come to you with the same question that you know, in terms of monetizing, what would be the best strategies for gaming startups? So, It's a very, <laughs> just such broad questions. I mean, I can go on for days, right? So there are four business, uh, four business models in the gaming ecosystem, right? The first one is a, uh, is a uh, for premium model where you pay for a game and then you start playing that game, right? The way you used to play in, uh, when we were kids, right? You used to buy these cartridges and then you used to buy even now PlayStation series. That's a premium model. Second is a premium model where you start playing a game for free. And then eventually, you know, you, you sort of, you know, you are blocked, your, you know, your, your game gets difficult and you need to buy certain things to either get, get more ammunition or get more get, uh, attempts or whatever, you know, or uh, something like a Candy Crush is operating on a premium model. The third one is an ad, ad driven model where you play games, uh, you know, you show ads uh, and uh, eventually you make money out of those ads when people buy, buy some or make some purchases, right? And a lot of these companies, I'm sure I don't have to tell you, everybody is pretty running on ad mods, right? The entire Facebook is built on ad, ad revenues. And the fourth one is real, uh, uh, which is, I think, the best and the recent made right now and probably uh, for the better unit economics one was, wise was, is uh, where people sort of, uh, let's say you and I are playing carom or, you know, let's say you're like fantasy, right? You, you pay an entry fee, there's a price pool. Uh, some rake will be getting getting deducted from the price pool and you get the rest of the money back. Uh, top players will get that back. Now the issue, there is also some issues, right? For example, historically it's been shown or it's been observed that uh, Indians are not that good with making uh, in-app purchases. So, I mean, that percentage is abysmally low, you know, when you compare it with US or Europe. Uh, there, Gaming companies can make tons of money without, without uh, you know, with just premium model uh, because people like to pay for games, right? In India, that's not the mentality. At least that's how it's been told, right? Paying for games is a waste of money. So that's why uh, usually Indian companies struggle with in-app purchases. However, of course, if you make a great game, like PUBG was able to milk a lot of money probably through in-app purchases, but still they were only breaking even at the end of the day. <clears throat> Very simple. If you're a small developer, you let's say you are a 
let's say you are an indie developer you are the only person who has, who have an idea you can easily start clocking you know the game is reasonably well you can make maybe 3000 4000 at the end of the month <clears throat> right you can simply integrate ad networks but the only problem there is that the ecpms which is the the amount of money you can you can earn per thousand people watching your ad for indian audience especially the tier 2 to tier 5 audience is again abysmally low because of their lower purchasing capacity versus a european or an american so yeah these are the pros and cons uh, for each of these things uh, but again uh, i think developers should should really try to try to uh, think it through what kind of game they want to build and accordingly they need to think of a monetization strategy so i would believe if if engagement increases uh, the 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 experience of engaging with the game in the big better i think that 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 in in purchase in uh, in app purchase uh, amount maybe may may improve that 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 for i yeah absolutely i think uh, yes how you de- define engagement again is important right if uh, time spent is the way you define engagement then then it means something else then as your as your time spent will increase you can totally show ads your ad revenue will also increase but right. your server cost will also increase alongside it hmm. and and so you need to you need to find out that balance where your unit economics is making sense for you right so that's why a lot of people put a paywall they will not let you play for free even a user wants to play for 1 hour in a particular game gaming companies will be like no after 30 minutes you have to either make a payment or you go right, right? uh because that's what probably monetarily makes no sense for them yeah okay uh, so we'll pick up some questions uh, from uh, the audience here also so uh, we have rachit uh, i think rachit has asked a question uh if you can give uh, the audio to rachit please rachit mitchell yeah rachit go ahead hello yes rachit we can hear you go ahead please yeah so hi everyone i wanted to ask that uh, there are lot of going on in online coaching in india right now like by just bought by uh, you know for 300 million who teaches coding for kids right yes go ahead yeah and uh, i have seen that there's a lot of boom in india right now for online gaming like pc gaming pubg and thing patti and all so i was thinking that what do you guys think about coaching for online games mm-hmm. because i have seen in usa there's a website called gaming sensei something which teaches online gaming and stuff hit in us and okay. uh, uh, i yeah yeah um, i just want to come in here actually uh, so Uh, I actually want to come in on a little bit earlier on the uh, previous question as yeah, well because yeah, yeah. I really like the point that Webber and Pavan were making about how uh, you know there is another monetization strategy now where uh, beneath the top layer is you know exactly what Rachit said as well. People are looking for coaching to be able to make more money on their online gaming, right? And whether it's now uh, my team eleven or Dream Eleven that's got a separate. set of experts uh, that are putting out their views on who to pick for a match that's another one and that's why for us we actually come in from a super quick perspective to say we are that simulator because we have used u- and utilized historical data based on the players within a particular league and that actually facilitates your choices in a my team 11 in a dream 11 in a playing 11 to make better choices right so uh, in some sense uh, we are the the coaching side of it while actually actually also being a simulator game and and i think that's why i think there is a there's a model there which is the added revenue right i mean obviously we're still going to look at the advertising revenue which i think historically wasn't very significant in gaming in india in some sense but i think now and going forward i do think ad revenue is going to be a much larger chunk uh, but yeah i think this this in in game coaching or looking for coaching to make more money online is going to be a big one and i think how you can uh tie up and find ways to facilitate that is going to be a a very very key role and, and you know we've tied up we're we're trying in the process to tie up with e-commerce platforms where therefore when you win coins on our platform you can then use that use that on a wallet online but then you've got the knowledge from there to be able to win more money and real cash on a fantasy platform as well so it's just another way of of coaching but making more money at the uh, at the end of it for a for a gamer Well, I think you already have talked about this uh, 
thing that you know the coaching thing so anything else that you would want to add there no i think i i i i i'll just reiterate reiterate that i think there is a very tangible opportunity there mm-hmm. um it's very early in india but i think there is something very interesting and i think some of the best teams will figure it out sort of pavan you have to add something before we move to the next question no i think uh, yes and to his uh, question very uh, you know pointedly i think there are these kind of uh, options that you the idea of you know giving gaming coaching online is already happening in india i mean so i think an academy has already started with uh, uh, with with uh, these video tutorials where you know top gamers can you can book session with these top gamers uh and uh, the same way i think white hat or uh, byju's if, if they have already i think they've already started teaching uh, coding blocks you know where people can actually code games you know you can mm-hmm. teach your kids how to make their first games mm-hmm. yeah okay. so a lot of it is happening in india already for fantasy uh, many applications are providing how to play how to choose their team uh, but not on larger scale uh, they are providing uh, through the uh, most reputable cricketers like sanjay manjrekar is providing akash chopra is providing the team suhel also has provided a team on fan code i have seen that yeah so uh, but in upcoming years uh, like uh, the the player who are playing most on the fantasy application can also provide the team to help the newbies who are who are coming to play so we will see this in upcoming future yes so you know we have a few minutes left so we'll take uh, a couple of more questions i think divakar singh has a question uh, uh, if you can give the mic to divakar singh divakar you have to unmute yeah. and ask the question yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, are you able to hear me yes yes please go ahead yeah see my question is that uh, i i see lot of uh, talented uh, gaming developers in the industry i am from hyderabad mm-hmm. and uh, we couldn't produce uh, best of the games from india in spite of having best of the talent uh, is it because of the conservative approach for us to brand globally and you know uh, having that kind of a approach or what is what is making us, are we really need to wait other games to be Uh, other band to you know our uh, gaming industry to have some kind of a, a stimulation uh, do I, i feel we have all that uh, i just wanted to know what are the reason you mm-hmm. are we we we, uh, we discussed about this uh, so towards the start of the session but uh, definitely i let uh, you know i'll ask uh, pavan or vaibhav if you can just you know uh, reiterate uh, some of the things that you had uh, said uh, for 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 the worker please I guess the main reason is funding issues. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Of course. Yeah. Okay. See, I think uh, if you are from Hyderabad, I'm sure I know at least uh, you know uh, there's so many companies in Hyderabad, right? good gaming companies. But the thing is, what's happening currently is a lot of these Indian game studios, which have good talent, they are actually acting as the back offices for global clients, right? So like US, Europe, those guys get like they get they get billed handsomely per hour basis, and they are able to. Turn some gaming uh, games for these European U- US clients, and uh, we need to shift that focus. And now, of course, if coming back to funding again, right? So they will have to literally uh, leave that safe path of recurring income and venture into building something of their own from the beginning. And yeah, that kind of if Indians and the Indian talent is is empowered to take that kind of a risk, plus with capital, plus with resources, then we'll be able to sort of you know arrive at some fabulous titles. you know i think pavan is right you know i think the there is a the the risk is not small when you when you want to build a detailed uh, a big game there's also the talent that you have to pay for and it, it doesn't come cheap you know and as as pavan said a lot of us are the back end for for investors and for for companies outside of india and and in many ways it's sort of a nice win win for them and for us as well so uh, you know in some ways i don't think it's it's conservative i think it's logical in many ways till you sort of have enough capital and enough funding i mean we've got a, a great, great investor who's uh, out of europe and we've had a good working relationship with them but yeah it is it is a big risk when you when you want to take a game from absolutely nothing and then put it out into any form right so yeah i think the minute there is enough capital and resources then it becomes uh, more doable and uh, it is still a big risk 
Yeah, and I think we'll have to just go through a generation of people who are building from scratch, uh, failing and learning, and 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 we'll we'll literally need to get some fairly large, uh, you know, amount of capital committed to something like this, right? Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. All monetization should be cracked, right? Consumers should be yeah. like spending their you know nuts and bolts into 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 every game. The way it happens in Bollywood, right? Yeah. Why Bollywood is being able to build such audacious projects because they know that if it's going to be a blockbuster, we learn 500 crores, right? The same way even a game developer should think. So it's easier to arrange for capital to take that kind of bet. Pavan, we basically have to find a hero where no matter whether the film is crap or not, people still turn up and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We need to find a, we need to find a bhai, bhai in the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry, gentlemen, I had got disconnected, but I'm back. So we have, we'll take this one more uh, uh, question, which is from Gaurav, I believe. So Gaurav Chai, if you can give him uh, the uh, audio, please. Hello, everyone. Yes, Gaurav, go ahead. Actually, my question was, you know, for the funding of the startup. So, I mean, I was like, I mean, every startup, you know, it needs funding to, you know, to scale up. So how do we approach VCs or, I mean, for that matter, any other investor? Oh. Yeah. So I, I can take a first crack at it. Um, look, Gaurav, I think uh, that's a classic question, right? And it has been uh, across segments, not just gaming. And I think um, my view has been very simple that, um, to cut, to, there's always a demand supply um, gap in almost every ecosystem, and I think in India we have a we have a very la large gap there, right? So I think the best way to kind of raise capital is just to um, actually what one of my founders articulated best. He said there's an information arbitrage um, that that has to be understood between founder who's trying to raise and a founder who actually successfully raises. There is a bunch of information. Uh, around how you pitch, what your deck looks like, are you do you understand all the key things that an investor looks for and things like that, right? So one way to look at it is just to find a mentor, uh, a founder who has raised, right? Nobody else. That's that's the mentor you're looking for, a founder who has raised to understand, hey, you know, where am I and where do I have to get to? Number one, right? Number two, I think, um, you know, getting introduced to investors, almost everybody gets uh, way too much than they can handle. So that the best way to get introduced is through a founder um, that that investor is already funded, right? So I think these two is these two are the most important, I would say. Um, besides which, I think you know, uh, you know, uh, let's say you you do a game and it, it it kind of is in the trending list. There are enough VCs and their uh, junior staff at those companies who are looking at app any and the rankings and things like that, right? So that's another way to quickly get attention as well. Obviously harder, but also something that some people have kind of uh, figured out quite well. But I think I would rely on the first to figure out your information arbitrage so you know that your pitch is worth listening to um, and, and you're very strong and you're not right, kind of not doing something that is a disservice to what where you already are. And then second, really figure out that warm introduction. I think I'm just going to add uh, to what Weber already said. I think great points. He's covered, uh, you know, most of it. The only other thing I would also add is maybe just do your deep research on the investors that you're looking at as well. I think uh, if you, you know, you've got to align with what they're looking to do as well within their portfolio. I think, uh, you know, we've had uh, investment from Artha Venture Fund in Bombay and also from Norton Wind for, for this. So, you know, from that aspect, we've sort of raised capital for Kabaddiata and Supercrick separately. But I think we found alignment in the vision of what each one wanted to do. And I think once you have that vision uh, that is shared, then it's easier to be on the same page, right? And I think uh, you've got to choose which battles to pick as well. Once, as, as Weber said, it's one thing to look to raise capital. It's another to actually raise it. And I think there's a whole process there that hinges on how you can work together. And, and, and you've got to pick your battles where you can let a few go and you've got to find the right compromise between the two as well. But Look, there's actually a lot of good courses online uh, that I actually put a couple of people onto, and I'm happy to, uh, you know, pass them on to Saurabh to to pass on to those who want to do a course in just how to approach a VC, how to create pitch decks, uh, you know, the process in in actually looking for funding. And I think it's good to also learn. There's a lot of we've all got time on our hands. We're sitting at home. Uh, I think it's a good time to upskill and, and you know do a few internalization courses on how to be a better, uh, you know. 
uh, startup and how to sort of pitch to to VCs as well. All right, gentlemen. Uh, I'm. Uh, I really want to continue this uh, conversation, but uh, in the interest of time, we'll have to uh, let. Uh, we'll have to finish now. So, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sohail. Thank you, Vaibhav. Thank you, Saurav. Thank you, Pawan, for being here today. It was really, really wonderful. Wonderful to know from you about the entire gaming ecosystem and where we are headed. And I'm sure that our listeners have also uh, uh, gained a lot from the insights uh, given by all of you here. So, hope to see you again and stay safe. Thank you so much. Thanks, sir. Thank, right. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Thanks so much, guys. It was a pleasure uh, attending this one day one. Bye. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Thank you.